So we're going to briefly look at a, another very important uh, type of curve that's based on an exponential function, and that's a normal probability density function. It looks like this, where these Greek letters mu and sigma are constants. Of course, pi is our normal constant pi, and e is our normal constant e, those uh, irrational naturally occurring numbers e and pi that we've been talking about. So let's look at a graph here. Here's a, what's called a standard normal, is when you have mu of 0 and sigma is 1, so the formula reduces to this, 1 over the square root of 2 pi times e to the minus x squared over 2. Now right away you notice that this is going to be an even function, it's symmetric about the y-axis, because if we put minus x in place of x, this formula is the same. And here's what the graph looks like. It has kind of a bell shape to it. So this is sometimes called a bell-shaped curve, or standard normal probability density function. This is very, very important in the study of probability and statistics. Some characteristics that this has, it's symmetric about the, about the y-axis here. That's also uh, the value of the mean, and it's also the, va it's the mean because it's the balance point. If we were to fill this area up here, it would, would balance out right there. There's half of it's to the left and half of it's to the right, so that also makes it a median. The total area under this curve, if it goes all the way from negative infinity to infinity, actually has asymptotes on both ends, but the total area between that curve and the x-axis is actually 1. That's kind of difficult to show, but that's true for all probability curves, normal pro or all, all continuous probability curves. Probabilities are found as areas under this curve. Um, so anyway, we get we get this basic shape. So uh, it's the median is also the same as the mean because half of the area or half the probability is below it. And it's also the mode because it's the highest point. So if we change the mean, change that value of of mu, this little thing looks kind of like a u there. That's called mu, m u mu. It's kind of like a Greek M, and that sigma is kind of like a Greek S. We've used the capital sigma for some. This is a lowercase sigma. So changing the mean is, of course, just a horizontal shift. Of course, you look at the formula from this one down here, the standard normal of this one, we're just replacing x. Well, say we leave sigma to be 1 still. We're just replacing x by x minus mu. And we know that that's going to be a horizontal shift, and here you see it. The red one has a mean of 0, uh, there's a mean of 1, mean of 2 is purple, mean of 3, whatever. And so we've got all these different means. The mean can be anything, any real number, so we can shift left and right as much as we want. So a mean is a measure of the center, and it's centered up on the mean. Changing the standard deviation, the sigma is, uh, now I'm using S in place of sigma here, is a little more interesting. What happens here is it um, the area stays one, but the the height and the spread changes. And the main thing you want to think about is the spread. So when it gets a smaller standard deviation like this yellow one here, it's going to go up higher, and things going to, are going to be pulled in. So the total area is one, but the area is much more concentrated on the mean. Then as the sigma gets larger, it gets more spread out. There's the standard one. Standard deviation 1, here's standard deviation 2, the purple one's 3, and here's 4 and 5. And so notice as the standard deviation gets bigger, it gets further spread out. And uh, really that's all we're going to do with the normal distribution right now, just so you can see that. And you can see uh, the effect of changing mu and sigma, and see that it is related to an exponential, but uh, a little bit different. basically replaces the x with an x squared mainly. Uh, a, a negative x square and uh, puts the right constants in front and you get this kind of a curve here.